It's time now for Perspective. Today we're looking at what the future could or should perhaps hold when it comes to renewable energy. Our guest is Dr Laura Watts from the University of Edinburgh. Her book about that revolution happening on the Scottish islands of Orkney, titled Energy at the End of the World, has been described as being not a cool breeze but rather an electrifying storm through this uh, field's thinking. Dr Watts, uh, thank you very much for being with us here on uh, France 24. It's a pleasure. It's uh, good to talk to you, Thomas. Thank you so much. And now, first of all, for our international viewers, I thought it might be helpful to uh, maybe place the Orkney archipelago on the map and also to discuss the climate and the conditions there that have made this revolution take place. Absolutely. So Orkney is uh, a group of islands that's off the northeast coast of Scotland. So it's uh, closer to the Arctic Circle than London, actually. And the islands are really where the Atlantic Ocean meets the North Sea. So as you can imagine, it's a pretty tempestuous place with uh, very high winds and some of the largest uh, amount of energy in the winds and waves as well. But is this, uh, this wind and wave uh, energy revolution, is everything going well? Are there any problems? Is there improvement to be made? So it, the energy in Orkney is very diverse and the islanders have been very busy making use of this power in their environment. So as you say, there's a, the European Marine Energy Center, which is a place where they've been testing wave and tide energy devices for the last 10 years, since 2003. But they also, not just that, um, they have a whole range of uh, locally owned wind turbines, they have electric cars, they actually have hydrogen fuel storage, and they have a smart grid. And in total, using all this extraordinary power in the landscape, they are now generating over 120% of their own energy electricity needs from the renewable energy in their winds and waves. So the energy future really has arrived early in Orkney. But could this same light bulb moment, uh, forgive the pun, uh, happen elsewhere, maybe somewhere less uh, blustery and extreme? I think that the, the kind of the issues that you're talking about and how we might learn from Orkney are, there's two things really. The first thing I think that's quite exciting is the understanding that the islanders have been using the resources that they have around them and looking at what they can and what they can kind of reuse in their landscape, you know, what energy do they have? And the, the other aspect I think is really crucial to remember is that this innovation is happening because they think about energy all the time. And they think about energy all the time because Firstly, as, as we've talked about, there's an extraordinary amount of energy in the landscape. But the second thing is they're turning things to their advantage that you might not otherwise expect. So, for example, one of the reasons that they think about energy is they have to, because the islands actually have, despite the energy in the landscape, uh, extraordinary levels of fuel poverty. Um, so about 63% of the islanders spend more than 10% of their income on their, on their fuel. So actually they don't have much choice sometimes than to think about energy. Uh, but that's something they have, uh, despite being a very serious issue, is something that drives them to create this energy future. And then the final thing that I think that uh, is really important about what's going on is that the, um, the islanders are very, very innovative because ultimately they think about the infrastructure around them because they have to. So you and I might not think about infrastructure very much. Uh, we might not think about where does our electricity come from. Um, but when you're at a, an edge location or in a precarious location, the, the lights go out occasionally in the storm or the ferries stop running. So again, this would seem to be a, a problem that many of us might think would be cause for a kind of social media meltdown and the lights have gone out. But actually in Orkney, it's, a, it's, it's an experience that makes them go, how can we be self-determined? How can we change and update our electricity grid? How can we you know, do what we can? And in fact, that's led the islanders to do these projects like the hydrogen storage project, like the wind turbines, like the electric cars. These are island-led innovations. This is about what can we do ourselves with what we have. Now, Dr Watts, how are these uh, dramatic changes uh, on the uh, archipelago of Orkney, how are they being viewed further south in Westminster, for example? So um, I think that that's a really important question because I think that, firstly, um, it's, it's a long way, as I sort of said, 
from, you know, from Westminster to Orkney. It's less of a distance from Holyrood, where the Scottish Parliament is, to, to Orkney. But I think the crucial thing is that is an opportunity for uh, to governments uh, to think about how they're going to update the grid. Because what's happening in Orkney it might seem like kind of a remote place. Why is that relevant to, to other places around the world and across Europe? But actually, places like Orkney, these energy islands that we have, where the resource is, where the renewable power is, is something that everyone needs to think about and every government needs to think about in the future. Because the renewable energy, the winds, the waves, the tides, you can't move them. Uh, and we're moving now from a, a low carbon grid to um, from a sort of a fossil fuel grid to a low carbon grid. So we need to basically change the shape of our electricity networks to go to where this renewable energy resource is. So that means that we need to think about how are they doing what they're doing in Orkney, which means we need to update the grids and we need to work in collaboration with these islanders to figure out how are they doing this innovation that they're creating at the edge? How can we listen to them? How can we learn from them so that we can then both take the energy they want to give, places like Orkney, have this fantastic renewable energy resource, which we all desperately need for our low carbon future. So we need to move that, we need to collaborate, we need to learn from what they're doing. Dr Watts, very briefly, are there other uh, remote on the edge uh, territories, so to speak, that are also doing uh, pioneering things in the, in the field of energy, renewable energy? Uh, very much so. I mean, my, my book doesn't cover these other areas, but Orkney, like a lot of islands, actually works in very much in collaboration with other energy edges across Europe. So um, you might be familiar with uh, places like Samsu in Denmark, which is a, another kind of energy island where they've been innovating with locally owned energy. We have places on the edge of Portugal. Um, you know, we have uh, Madeira. We have a whole range of different places around the edge where the resource is. So this is something which is happening, I think, everywhere across Europe at the moment. OK, Dr Laura Watts from the University of Edinburgh and the author of Energy at the End of the World. Thank you so much for being with us here on France 24.